Hi, Kate DeRusso with the Majestic Rider. So today I'm going to talk to you about getting your horse through obstacles. And I'm actually going to show you how I get a horse through obstacles. It's very important before you try to do obstacles with your horse that you've done some groundwork with them and you have a relationship with your horse. Because the more they trust you, the more they will try. But if you've never worked with them at all, you haven't done anything on the ground, you really won't have the respect, you won't have the control, and the horse won't be, well, it might be, but most horses won't be willing to try it for you. So I always make sure I can lunge my horses first. I can do the sending exercise with them. They know how to move their hindquarters and have an idea how to move their shoulders. The shoulders doesn't have to be perfect, but it helps. And they have a good backup on them and they stay out of my space. Because when I start obstacles, I like to do it on the ground, if possible, first, if the horse has never seen something before. And to do that, you have to make sure you have a safe bubble around you that the horse isn't going to jump into it or knock you over or run you over. And so they need to respect your space and they need to understand the signals you give them. So when I'm trying to get a horse through an obstacle, and I don't want to go through it like water, I a lot of times send them. So I take the lead and I kind of send them out and then I'll wave my stick towards them. So I always have a stick and I always have either the reins hooked to the halter or I have a lead with me. And usually I like it to be long if possible in case they do try to jump the obstacle. So I will ask them to go. Most of the time they'll go up to the object and then they're like, I'm not going through that. And they try to go away, right? So you pull them back and you apply pressure again. Every time they make an effort, like, what's that? But they went up towards you take pressure off. When they go back like this, like, I'm not going, that's when you add pressure. Because most of the time the horses aren't doing it because you're applying pressure at the wrong time and you're resting them at the wrong time. So always apply pressure when they're moving away from the object and keep steering them so they don't turn and bolt away. And when they go up to the object or make any effort to try, like they take one step, that's when you release. Tell them they're a good horse, you can give them a little treat, and then you're just going to repeat it over and over. You'll see I use this dog pool today. So when the horse puts its foot in it that first time, I reward them. Make a big fuss. What a good boy! Yes, give them some scratches. Now most of the time they'll put their foot in and they'll take it out. They're like, whew, that was a lot. And that's okay, because again, they don't know what it is. So you give them a little rest, then you ask them again. Then before you know it, they'll put two feet in if you do it correctly. And before you know it, they'll go through it and go out the other side. Then you're trying to come at the obstacle, if possible, from all angles. Because the horse is always trying to look like, how can I get away from this? If you can make them go through it at all angles, they'll stop looking to get away from it anymore. Because they're like, no matter where I go, she makes me go through that. So I'm just going to go through it once and then off we go. So that way, when you get out on the trail and you meet the water, they just go, oh, I know she's going to make me go through this. I'll just go through it. So have the good control on the ground, have a stick with you. You might need spurs if your horse doesn't listen to you well. And it's best, if possible, to practice all these things at home. Make it similar to the trail. You know, if your horse doesn't like mud, take the hose and make a muddy area. And that's what you're going to work with. If your horse doesn't like water, make, you know, a stream with the hose. And I have videos where I've done that. And I just run the hose and make the horse go through it over and over again. I make them go through sprinklers and everything. All right, so once you can do it on the ground, then you can do it under saddle. You want to be careful, like the pool I used is a little slippery, so you want to put something in the bottom to help if you're going to use something like that so they don't slide. You also want to use something that's not going to break on them, so it needs to be tough enough, not like a little kiddie pool that's going to bust in half when the horse steps on it, and then it might scare it, it might slip, then the both of you might fall. So. You want to be as safe as possible. You also want to be careful uh, using tarps because they can get caught on the horse's shoes, which can cause an accident. So just make sure you have safety checked it as best as you could. Once you're up in the saddle, you keep your hands wide like this because it'll give you better control. So if the horse starts to go right, you pull out left. That way you're not pulling back on them and they don't have an excuse to go backwards, okay? So the horse tries to turn to the right leave, you pull out and pull left and block them with your right leg. The horse tries to leave left, you pull out with your right rein, block them with your left leg. So you got to be good at that because if you're slow, you won't apply the rein and the leg 
at the correct time. And you got to do it at the same time. So if they're pulling left, it's right rein and that leg at the same time to block them. And then you use your stick. So if they're trying to lead to the right, and that's the way they kept trying to get away from the object, and my stick was in my left hand, I switch it to my right hand. If their head's going that way, and I'll pull one and nothing's happening, I'll tilt the stick towards their head. So they go, oh, I don't want to get hit with that, so I'll move over that way. If it's their hindquarters moving out, then I'll just give a little wiggle with the stick that way, and if they don't listen, and I'll give them a little tap. The stick is just some incentive to make them go. A lot of times you don't have to hit them, you just have to carry it. <laughs> So you're using that to help you. So again, if they go right, you pull left, but apply your right leg at the same time. If the horse goes left, you pull on your right rein out to the side, it's called an open rein, and block with your left leg at the same time. Now you keep doing that back and forth, applying pressure, and what'll usually happen is the horse is like, I'm not doing this, and they start backing up. So that's when you apply more pressure, and as soon as they go forward, even if they didn't take a full step, but they started to go, you take the pressure off. Good boy, scratch. Good job, buddy. Then you wait a couple of seconds, five to 10 seconds, and usually they'll start trying to move away more. So they start moving, you just say, break's over, okay, let's go. You apply pressure again, try to get them to take another step forward. If they do, that's when you take pressure off. But if they go backwards, you keep putting pressure on. Now say your horse drags you over there, away from the object. Don't freak out, it's okay, because you're gonna fix it. So if they take you somewhere else, you go, oh, thank you so much for bringing me over here because now I can do 20 turn on the forehands. Let's do it to the left 10 times. Let's do it to the right 10 times. And then let's try to walk back over to that object. So don't give them a break at all. Don't let them stand, but you just make their life miserable wherever they took you, and then you take them back over to the object. Again, if it's going really bad under saddle, get off, do it on the ground first. And if that's all you can do that day, that's all you can do. And the next day you do it on the ground and then you try it under saddle again. But anytime they take you away from the object or you took them away by accident, give them a job to do. Turn on the forehands are great. Horses do not like to do that over and over again. They don't like to do turn on the haunches either, but some of the horses will rear up. So you gotta be careful with the turn on the haunches. When you do a turn on the forehand, they cannot rear up because their back feet are moving, okay? But you can do either one. You can, you can also side pass them. You can um, back circles. You can back patterns. If you walk forward and make a circle, that's not hard for the horse, so that won't make them think. If you just walk around and make a serpentine, that's not that hard. That won't make them think. So you have to think, what does my horse not like? And that's what you either make them do, or if they don't like an object besides the obstacle you're going over, that's where you go over to. Like, oh, you don't want to do this? Let's take you over to the annoying dog who barks in your face, and then let's try and do that obstacle again. Okay? Now, every time they, you get up to the obstacle, you rest them when they do the right thing. So then you keep applying pressure, and now when they stick their foot on it, they're usually going to stick it on and take it off. When they put it on, good boy, good job. When they take it off, you can rest them for a second if they stay there, but if they start backing up, you apply pressure. And then you keep asking them over and over. And you'll see how I did it in the video. All of a sudden, he put two feet in, and then all of a sudden, he went through it. And I just did it over and over again until I thought he did it pretty well. Some of the time, as this horse got better, he's smart. He's trusting of me. He likes me. And he knows I'm going to make him do it. I'm not going to give in. So some of the time, once he do it, all I did was block him. I never asked him to go, and he just went through the thing himself. I never applied my leg or anything. I just blocked him from going the other directions. And he goes, well, I guess I'll just go forward, okay? So if they're smart, they'll figure it out. Treats are great. Um, it's up to you what you want to give them. Otherwise, scratches are great. Wherever they're scratchy, that's where you want to scratch them. What you don't want to do, and this is what most people do, and this is why you have problems with obstacles. You go up to the object. The horse doesn't want to do it, or he goes on the object or the bridge or whatever it is, like, you know, half, and then turns and goes off the thing, and then you go somewhere and you rest them. Or you say, I'll make a circle and I'll come back to that object. So you make a circle and you take the horse away from the object, and then you try to come up again. Don't do that. It doesn't work very well, at least not for the horses that are having major problems with it, because you take them away from the object, that gives them a rest, and then you take them back where they don't want to be. You want to associate the object with the rest and going away with not resting. Okay, I'm going to say it again. So the object, when they try to do the right thing, that's where you rest them. When they go away or you take them off somewhere, 
that's where they're working. Don't rest over there. But that's what I see people do over and over again. The other thing is people are scared, so they're not doing it well enough. They're like, ah, oh, he's going to jump it. I'm going to, ah. And so you can't help the horse. So you need someone else to help the horse to get through it first. Your trainer, your friend, let them do it first. Then you get on and do it. Okay? Because then you'll see the horse do it and you go, oh, he's really not that bad. He can do it. So you need to have good balance. You need to have confidence to help them get through it. Otherwise, you need someone else to do it for you. Okay? But remember, if the horse trusts you, he will try. If you're kind to the horse when he does the right things, he will try. If you give him a little treat when he does the right things, he will try. Or she, she will try. If you scratch her when she does the right thing, she will try. But if you let them go away from the object and you give them rest or any of those things I just said away from the object, guess what? They're going to try not to do it because they're getting rewarded for not doing it. So if you're off on the side like, yeah, it's okay, you're going to be fine, we can do this, but you're 20 feet from the object, you're rewarding them for not trying. Do that close to the object, but not far away from the object. So remember, make the right thing easy, wrong thing hard. So every time you buy the object, it's a good thing. Every time they're away from the object, it's a bad thing. If you try to do this pool thing and you're just not being successful, the other thing you can do is put their food in it and put it in their stall. Make sure it's safe or that you're going to be around when you do this. But usually if you put some grain in there, they'll figure out how to get in there because that's what they do. They do that with trailers when you're not around. They do it with all sorts of stuff. They're actually much smarter than most people think. But they will figure it out and if there's food in it they will not be so afraid of it especially if they're hungry okay so that's how i get through obstacles but i take my time uh, the other thing i would say if their feet are stuck in front of the object back up a little bit try it again sometimes their feet are so close to the object like right behind it they can't figure out how to back their foot up and get it over it so if they're stuck there it's the same thing with the trailer back them up a little bit get them some room and then try it again if you have room but they're stuck, this is what I do. I pull left, right, left, right. So what you're doing with the horse is you, let's go left, no, let's go right. Let's go left, let's go right. And you're like, oh my God, I got him to move forward, okay? So remember, pull left, and it doesn't matter if we pull right first, but left, right, left, right. Because it gets your horse moving because they think, oh, I'm going that way. And you're like, no, you're not, you're going this way. And he goes, oh, I'm going that way. As long as I'm not going towards that obstacle, I'm good. And so you pull left and you pull right and you pull left and you pull right with leg on at the same time and that'll get your horse up to the obstacle as well that's also a good thing to do when you're passing over little things of water and you think your horse is gonna jump it come to it at an angle and pull left right left right left right don't just toss your reins and grab the mane because you're just teaching them to jump it if they do jump it whatever object it is i go back and i tell everybody i'm riding with hey you guys need to wait or you can leave, I don't care, but I'm staying here. And I go back and forth through that object until my horse doesn't jump it anymore. Unless I wanted to jump it, then that's different. But otherwise, you gotta do it, do it both directions until that horse is calmly doing it, and we're better at it, and it's not jumping it. If you don't, and if you get to a little creek and everybody's going, your horse jumps it, and you're like, oh, I should work on this. But everybody's leaving, so I gotta go. All you're doing is teaching your horse to do the wrong thing, okay? so. Show them how to do it, present it to them, and then help them to get through these obstacles the correct way. And then when you see it out on the trail or the next time, it won't be such a big deal. Most of the time, we'll just go right through it because you spent time fixing it and helping them get there. Okay, so here's the water. It's just got a couple inches of water, not much in there. Just enough to make them freak out. Hi, Gay Duriso, the Majestic Rider, here today with Gucci. So. I'm going to show you how to get a horse through obstacles. So I'm going to show you on the ground first, and then I'll show you under saddle. You're very funny. And so I have a pool behind me. It's a dog pool. It's got about that much water in it. He's never been through it before. And of course, he will probably try to avoid it. Make sure you have your equipment. He's got a halter on underneath his bridle. And I have a stick to help to guide him. So you're trying to create pressure everywhere around the pool except in it. So anytime they take a step towards it, you release. Anytime they move away, you start to put more pressure on them. So let's just see how it goes. So if you look at the pool, it's like a dog bone. So the easiest way in the beginning is to take the shorter route. So 
I'm going to go across it that way and we'll see if that works out or not. Okay.
to show them what you want them to do. Otherwise, they really have no idea. It's kind of like when I'm instructing people and I tell them to make a circle and they make a circle and I go, no, that's not it. Make a bigger circle. No, that's not it. Do it over there. Yes. But if I actually went over and walked it out, they would know better. So I better do that, shouldn't I? them in front of it. That's the only place I'm going to let them stop and rest. the same direction we already did.
that's the pool. That's pretty hard to keep a first go through that. He's like, not me.